Question six. Sarah is carrying out a series of experiments which involve using increasing amounts of a chemical. Well, it's dangerous. Is she wearing goggles? In the first experiment, she uses six grams of the chemical, and the second, she uses 7.8. Given that the amount of chemical used form an arithmetic progression, find the total amount of the chemical used in the first 30 experiments. Arithmetic. That's the one where we add on an amount each time. So that means that in part one, we're beginning with our initial amount being 6. And we've added on. We've added on 1.8. So the common difference is 1.8. And we are supposed to be finding the sum of the first 30 experiments. If we look in the formula booklet, it says that the sum of the first n terms is n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1 times d. At which point, we carefully type that into the calculator and it gives us, um, what does it give us? A value of 963. Okay. There we go. And that's enough. That was our three marks. Quite, quite a nice three marks, isn't it? Part two. Now it starts getting more complicated. Instead, it's given that the amount of the chemical form a geometric progression. Okay. Sarah has a total of 18... 100 grams of chemical available, show that n, the greatest number of experiments possible, satisfies that, and use logarithms to calculate the value of n. Right. So now we're told it's a geometric regression. Aha! That's the one where you multiply by something to work out what's happened. So that means that our first term, our first term was still 6, but our second term this time of being 7.8. Now that second term was the first term times a number. The common ratio. So the common ratio is 7.8 divided by 6 this time. And 7.8 divided by 6 is 1.3. So we've now got our common ratio. We probably could have guessed that, because the 1.3 appears there. So we, you know, we kind of had a clue that we're on the right lines with that. Um, now we're dealing with the sum. The sum has got to be, the total is going to be 1,800. So we've now got to work with the fact that our sum of the first n terms has to be less than or equal to 1,800. And again, we refer to the formula booklet where it gives us the sum of the first n terms of a geometric progression as being a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. That's going to be less than or equal to 1800. Now, at this point, we've got to try and work on this and show that it gives us this answer. If things don't go well for us, and it doesn't feel like we're going to get to this answer, we stop. And we go straight to this answer, and we use logarithms to finish the question off. Okay, this has given us, it's six marks, but this has given us a kind of halfway point to aim for. And if we can't get to that halfway point, we'll just jump there and do the last bit. But at least we haven't wasted the two marks at the end of it. But we'll see how we actually get there. Um, what we would do with this... Well, well, the order that I did it was I did 6 divided by 1 minus 1.3. Now, 1 minus 1.3 um, is 0.3. Minus 0.3. If I do minus 0.3, uh, 6 divided by minus 0.3, I get 20. So I have minus 20 times 1 minus 1.3 to the n is less than or equal to 1800. Let's divide everything by the 20. 
um, things start to look a little bit nicer then. We've got 1 minus 1.3 to the n. Oh, no, hang on, I've just, I've just divided by minus 20. Remember, if you divide or multiply a, an inequality by a negative number, you swap the sign around. That gave me minus 90. Now, I, I, this was just the way I did it. It was probably a nicer way of, of algebraically organising this without having to do that. I'm sure there is. If I rearrange things now, I'm going to add the 90 to this side. I'm going to take my 1.3n over to this side. And there, aren't I? I've got 1.3 to the n is less than or equal to 91. Was that where I was going to? It sure is. So I got there. You just have to show that you can get from there to there. If you're not sure you can get from there to there, write something that's correct and then write hence. I hope that you've done enough to show it. Okay, having got that far, we now need to solve it to find the value of n. And actually, loads of you did this bit really well. It said use logarithms, so we're going to put um, the natural log in front of both sides. Or, or log base 10, whichever one you want to use. So uh, natural log of 1.3 to the n is less than or equal to the natural log of 91. n, ln 1.3 is less than or equal to ln 91. So n is less than or equal to ln 91 over ln 1.3. Or you might have done something fancy with that log button where you can change the base and use 1.3 as your base. Whatever you did to get there, loads of you did that right, and you came up with n being less than or equal to 17.193. But you forgot to think about the context of what we were doing. Remember, this was all about the number of experiments that she could do. She only had 1,800 grams of the chemical available. What we said is that the number of experiments has to be less than or equal to 17.193. She can't do 17.193 experiments, because what does 0.193 of an experiment look like? The, the number of experiments she can do is 17. If this number had been 17.993, the answer would still be 17, wouldn't it? And it's going to be the, the biggest whole number you can do up to that point. So therefore, um, 17 experiments. There we go. And we have to turn it into a whole number to get the final mark at the end of it. Yep, hence n equals 17. That's it. Okay? Happy? Maths.